All right. I think we're set to get started. Hello, sir. All right. Thank you guys for all coming. Let's uh, call this meeting to order for the Charter Township of Bedford uh, for January 11, 2018. Let's all rise. So Pastor Randy from Bethel Baptist is going to start us with uh, the invocation. Heavenly Father, Lord, that you say in your word that we may not lack wisdom when we master God and give them all liberally. And we pray that you would please give wisdom to the uh, leaders here of uh, Bedford Township as they uh, plot a course uh, for the people of this township and uh, give them the wisdom they need to make the decisions that will uh, bring glory on to you and benefit the uh, people of the township. And I pray for the safety of the law enforcement officers. For a very trying and terrible time, we ask God to give them wisdom and in their extreme situations they find themselves in, or in the winter, and we ask God for the uh, emergency personnel and the fire department people to give them wisdom with the cold temperatures coming back again, the snow, and watch over them, and the highway people, Lord, the plow the snow, and we just thank you that we can come to you and ask for these things, Lord. May I ask all these things in your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to show the first thing. Amen. Amen. And how about, oops, keep keep up there, sir. How about you lead us with, uh, with that Pledge of Allegiance? Well, I, I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hi, Cliff. Here. Caraco here. Does it help? Here. Zipsick? Yeah. Shaw? Here. Gibson? Here. We're Johnson? Here. Everybody's here. Um, I'm going to start off um, under unfinished business. We have reading the ordinance um, and I'm going to strike that from the agenda this time since uh, the Planning Commission met this month and we uh, they didn't discuss anything yet and so that's what we had voted on at the last month's meeting um, and so there is no reason to have that on the agenda at this time so I but I <laughs> it's, so it's on there because we didn't finish it. So it, it doesn't mean we have to do action on it. We didn't finish it. It wasn't finished. We passed it to the Planning Commission, but the Planning Commission couldn't help me out. Right. There's There, there was no action or anything discussed there, with the Planning Commission based on all of the things that we um, had uncovered, that we had questions mm -hmm. about as to why we voted uh, to not read it in last month. So that the planning commission can do reviews and revisions, but because there was more but than they can't several. do reviews. They can't do revisions. reviews and no, revisions. No, we have to do the revision and send it to them. Well, then we will do the the revision and and send it back to them. Can I have a moment for clarification sure. on that? I, I was a little bothered by what we would do. I mean, there were things that Adam brought up, but there was no real clarity on what we were supposed to take up, and I didn't understand that the board was just saying we don't like what you did and taking it back to the planning commission or what we were supposed to do with it. So I asked council for an interpretation. The way the statute reads is the general board can vote up or down on a recommendation from the planning commission or amend. You guys always have the opportunity to amend it all you want. If you amend it, you can amend it and vote up or down on it, or if you choose, you can send the amendments that you've written, the written amendments, back to the Planning Commission for comment, then we'd make comment. Along with that statute stipulates that you send it back to the Planning Commission, you do so with the timeline. So you send, you would write the amendments to it, then you would send it back, if you so desire, to the Planning Commission and say you have 60 days or whatever the timeline, but that's the stipulation in the statute. So what you did last time, we couldn't take up because there is nothing to take up. We don't have any details. So really, if you just write the details of what you want changed, then the Planning Commission, if the board wants to, 
will only comment on, only make comments on why we did those things and whether we think those items are legitimate and why we would think they're legitimate or if we thought they should change. Okay. Well, then it, it will still be removed at this point in time from the agenda for tonight. Um, I will take up uh, what you had just discussed so that at the next meeting we will have that written into uh, what we're going to vote so that we can handle it in the proper way. So yeah, thank and then you. we'll just handle it whatever your direction and then we'll sure. put it on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. On to the approval of the December 14th, 2017 minutes. Resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Bedford to approve the December 14th, 2017 <coughs> minutes as submitted. Support. Support. And questions, alterations, anything we saw that needed to be changed in the minutes? Okay. Seeing none, then uh, we'll just call roll on that. Johnson? Yes. Heikla? <coughs> yes. Paraco? Yes. Desert Hall. Yes. Sipsick. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Seven. <coughs> All right. Minutes are approved. On to my little chat with us again here. <sighs> this year has had a lot of ups and downs, and we've discussed the majority of them. These meetings have also had our ups and downs. We've had some pretty good meetings over the last year. I think all of us here can agree on that. We've had some pretty bad meetings as well. Those meetings that have gone bad, they've gone poorly because we have not followed the system of order that we have set in place for us to have order in our meetings. And I will take credit for that, that failure because as I've admitted to everyone that I've spoken to about this, that Robert's Rules of Order is not my strongest suit by any means. It's not something that, that I have studied to the degree that I'm going to now. And I'd ask that all of our board members, as, as well as the audience here, <coughs> reads up on Robert's rules. I know, I know Mark knows it well. He does a great job at, at maintaining that in his meetings. He does have some more experience in, in running those Robert's rules at, at a meeting than I have. It is an experience that I just currently don't have enough of and am growing in it. And many people I know have seen and, and the changes over the last year. And I'm gonna hopefully continue to grow in that. And I want all of us to grow in that. Part of those rules is, is that we have an order of our communication. Communication is something that a lot of us struggle with in this, in this township. Again, I struggle with my communication. I want to become a better communicator every day. And I fail. I fail today. I'll probably fail tomorrow, guys. But the important thing is that if we all truly want to work together, that we look past those failures that we're all bound to have. Because this township is not a failure. This township is poised to do some amazing things. And I know all of these people on this board and, and many of you in this audience and all, a ton of people that are watching at home know that, that that's where we're at. That we have good things that are happening every day. But we all fail at times. And I'm sorry for some of the meetings that have gone poorly. As I said, I want to do my best to make sure that we run it this properly. Part of that as well is that we have to stay positive. It is a, there's a saying that everyone hears that you don't, you don't get people 
motivated to, to act or do anything until they're affected. But that statement is cut off short because it's not just when you're affected, but it's when you're affected negatively. And it's those negative things that ends up motivating too many people to act. And we need to see people motivated for all of the positive things and see the action and the change that truly comes in our community by acting positively. So I thank you all once again for coming tonight. It is important that we have participation, but we need to make sure that we all understand what positive participation looks like and how we can, we can, we can make things happen like we've never seen before because of positive energy behind our actions. I will, I will make the commitment again to focus on doing positive reinforcement in all activities in all of my way. And I apologize to you here on the board that I have had just this week where we, we've had some bumps. So thank you. We have a lot of good things happening. So please continue participating. but participate in the positive ways. Thank you. Now tonight we do have a special order of business just like we did last year. We, we, uh, a month behind on it. So it's resolution 1 11 1801 resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Bedford to adopt resolution 1 11 1801 whereas public act number 152 of the public acts of 2011 limits a public employer's expenditures for employee medical plans and whereas the act provides that the board of trustees of the charter township of bedford may exempt the charter township of bedford from the requirements of the act for the next succeeding year and whereas the board of trustees of the charter township of bedford have determined that it is in the best interest of the charter township <coughs> of bedford to exempt the township from the requirements of the act now therefore it is hereby resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Bedford that it shall be exempt from the requirements of the Act for the year 2018. Support. 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 <coughs> and any discussion on the board? It's the same thing that we did last year at this meeting. We're going to make sure that we get it in at the, at the right time frame next year. Um, this is... Uh, yeah. Any questions? No? Paul, do Hi, Cliff. Yes. Caraco, yes. Does it tell? Yeah. Sipsick. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Seven. On to our other, in the communications, uh, if anyone would like our packet of information, we can always make, we'll make it available to you um, on, on your request. Uh, we do have our draft uh, of the December 2014 minutes, our check register, uh, our draft ordinance for licensing uh, for the medical marijuana facilities, which we will be uh, talking about here to, tonight. Um, the draft amendment um, for, the or for the zoning ordinance as well for the medical marijuana facilities. And not to finance, always have to pay the bills. Uh, that is going to be resolution 111 1802, resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Bedford to approve the payment of expenses totaling $97,142.73. Anyone have any questions this month on the expenditures? It goes up and down. We've had. It's, uh, I feel it almost brings it to about the average, honestly. We've had some that are 100 and 150. Yeah, yeah, it just depends. Just, what it I guess maybe I would just, mm -hmm. the last few months have gone over the last of the night. Sure. Okay. Yep. We had a dispatch payment that was a larger one in there, as well as um, the okay. biggest one was uh, we did have our insurance premium that is paid out okay. at this time of year. And so that's okay. a big chunk that's okay. for the year. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Huh? Paul Who supported that? Um, yeah. Chris. Chris okay. did, yeah. 
Baracko, yes. Desertel, yes. Sipsick, yes. Shaw, yes. Gibson, yes. Johnson, yes. Heikla, yes. Seven. All right, on to public health and safety. Can we have officer? No. Nope. We've got the uh, Sergeant Hunt. <laughs> How's everybody doing? We made it through Good. Christmas, made it yeah. through New Year's. <laughs> we're in here. We have Officer Kidney is with us. Chief Block is here as well. And somewhere around here, I think Lieutenant Bagwell is still around. I don't really have a lot to pass on. I was just uh, making a few notes. Our big hot topic was the speed enforcement. Uh, we had talked quite a bit about that the sign, and we had the printout um, here. I don't know if everybody has a copy of that with some graphs. The board does. It looks like uh, due to our good Michigan weather, some of the uh, speeding on Wabasco Road has slowed up a bit. There are uh, there were a few infractions, it looks like, or what could be considered infractions, but uh, it was pretty low risk uh, at that point in time. The question I may have is where do we want to see that sign go next on a non-state highway? Um, yes, sir. Custer. Custer? Custer Speedway. Yeah. Uh, cover and deterrence again. Uh, we've seen quite a few larcenies. Uh, some of this information has made it from the news. It looks like people are still trying to, I just saw it on News 3 tonight, people are raiding mailboxes looking to take money that doesn't belong to them, which is very unfortunate. And we've seen an increase, not so much in Bedford, uh, so to speak, but in other parts of the city where um, People are leaving garage doors open, cars unlocked, laptops, wallets, things are locked in the cars, weapons, and they're getting taken. These, these are all kinds of opportunities. Somebody goes to the neighborhood at night, and they, uh, you know, between the hours that the paper people, or the paper delivery service comes through, and then the work crew goes in to work, you know, earlier in the morning, maybe 6 a.m., 5 a.m., there's a couple hour gap there, and if these people are driving through when there is traffic, or there are other vehicles on their own, they just see these garage doors open, and that's a kind of opportunity to them. So just want to remind you to keep those things, uh, garage doors closed, keep your stuff locked up. You get new TVs, if somebody's going to buy a 346 inch TV, uh, <laughs> take the box, shred it up, cut it up, put it in a bag, and then stick it on the curb. That'd be great. Um, if anybody has any questions at all at any time, feel free to contact Officer Kidney. Um, we try to adhere to the chain of command. He can get it to me or to Sergeant Bell or somebody else. We prefer to handle these in the afternoon. Day shift uh, sergeants are available. I urge you to also seek their recommendation. If you do have questions immediately during the day, but we like to handle a lot of that on our shift since we are the ones attending this meeting. Then we can address it on both ends. Um, if you have to go up the chain of command, we can pass it up to Lieutenant Bagwell and on off that direction. Um, and if I don't have any other questions, I have Miss Jenny here from the Fusion Center, and she has a little presentation for everybody. So any questions, anything at all? Good. All right, Miss Jenny. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jenny Martin, and I'm a community engagement coordinator with the Madison Police Department, and I am honored uh, to be here to talk about the Citizens Police Academy, which has been revamped since 2012. and. I completely undermine how many people would be here. Usually I have like 12, 15 people at meeting, so I only brought um, about like 13 flyers, so I don't know how what to do with this. Should I just place it here? So, um, I mean, if you want to give for board members and then we can okay. make others accessible for, for everyone. Right. Can, if you can um, give us a digital copy even or something. And you can yeah, so... I made a posting on Facebook, and I will do another one uh, <coughs> next week. So um, look for us, uh, look out for us um, on Facebook, Battle Creek Police Department. So I will make a posting uh, first thing next week. Uh, so Tuesday, Tuesday is when I'm going to make that posting. Um, so I have. So I'll talk a little bit about the, what the Citizens Police Academy is. <coughs> it is a group made up of Battle Creek and Bedford Township residents. Um, who are interested in learning more about uh, the, how their local police department operates and um, some of the policing challenges our community faces. And this is a 10-week program, and it runs um, one, uh, sorry, it, so the class meets one night per week for three hours and one Saturday uh, for five hours. And the Saturday is 
going to meet on April, April 14th. 14th, thank you. Um, and then the purpose of this program is to develop a positive relationship between the police department and the community at large uh, through education to address um, some issues, misunderstandings, misinformed, misused information about the police department um, to the community members. And um, as a result, we're hoping to have a growing number of um, well-informed, um, responsible citizens to bring back what they learn to the community and um, influence the public opinions about police practices and services. And um, at the same time, there's an opportunity for local residents to, um, to offer comments and ideas regarding police solutions um, in the community. And our instructors would be officers and personnel, and Sergeant Hub would be one of our instructors as well. Um, and we will have specialized guest speakers. Um, some of the subjects that we will be covering are um, defensive tactics, firearms, uh, domestic violence, criminal investigations, um, internal affairs, and we're going to have a jail tour and mock trial. And we have um, some requirements. You have to be at least 18 years of age, and you have to be um, a resident of Battle Creek or Bedford Township. And if you're not a resident, you have to be at least, um, you have to have a business in the area. And um, the participants will be chosen by our chief of police. Um, and then we will be providing light meals before each class and then um, free t-shirts and materials needed for um, the class. And application deadline is February 9th and we have about a month left and we have 20 spots to fill. And so, like I said, you can look us up on Facebook um, Battle Creek Police Department, or if you want to go ahead and do the application online, what you can do is Google. I'm sorry I can't um, copy and paste the link on the flyer because it's too long. So um, so if you just want to Google uh, Battle Creek BCPD Citizens Police Academy online application, it's just going to take you right to the, um, the online application. And um, so basically what we're striving, uh, BCPD, what we're striving is to um, be transparent in everything that we do and, um, and our motive behind it is to build and maintain a positive relationship with our community and um, this is our way to, uh, this is our way of taking that to the next level. So do you guys have any questions regarding that comment? <coughs> I don't believe so. I'll put a link to that on uh, on our website as well, and no, we can so share good. it, and we'll we'll share okay. it through uh, our Facebook page. Um, and so, um, just hopefully, if some of the community members will see that and share it as well. I'm sure they'll get some traction for you. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, on to Chief. Here we had 372 runs here in the township on structure fires, automobile accidents, uh, lines down and stuff. 27 of the runs we have made also from the last time we had a meeting in December up to this date. We have had 27 runs. Two of them have been mutual aid. One was with Penfield last Sunday morning where they had a structure fire on White Rabbit Road, almost 266 there. The house, the lady woke up and the dog woke her up in the house and was filling with smoke. She was trying to get the dog and the cat out of the house and find him, and then finally it filled up with too much smoke and stuff, and she went out to go out the back door, and meanwhile there was a lot of gases built up in the house and smoke. As soon as she opened up that door in the background, it went right over, burned her on the back and her hair and her hands and stuff. She was lucky to get out of the house. Uh, also in Penfield, we've been over to the Pines a couple of times also over there for stove fires and uh, other things and mutual aid with them. Wires down. Burning complaints, we've had a couple, few of those burning complaints. Uh, some accidents, we had a bad accident here uh, a couple of Wednesdays ago down here on West Michigan and Prudence down there where a couple of them collided down there. And also we've had the store hit again in the Beppard in the village there. A lady took it off a week ago Saturday, hit the back portion of the building and took the whole shed of it right on off. So she was 
driving. That's about eight times I think that that store has been hit out there and stuff. <laughs> Slow down. Uh, had some older investigations. Uh, as soon as we got back last Sunday from Penfield, we got all the equipment and everything back in together, and we was up the station. We got a call down here on Oak Street to go down there. The house was smelling inside once we got there, and the guys got looking around, smelled like wiring. They got into the bedroom, crawl space in the bedroom up down underneath the, the house, and then what it was was a pump on the motor down in there. It set up, and so it was smelling wiring burning up and stuff there. Uh, fire vehicles, we've had a couple of those. The house fires we've had here in the township, we had one up on Cardinal, and that was caused by a fireplace malfunction. Uh, Collier and Meacham, we had one there. The neighbor was watching the house across the road for uh, the guy over there who was in the Philippines. He went across and put the dog outside, and you know, the garbage can was sitting on the floor, and he put the garbage can up on top of the electric stove. Well, consequence, so the dog wouldn't get in it. The dog came in, found it up there, Jumped up and turned the uh, electric stove on, so it melted down the garbage can and then uh, put it for smoke damage in the house and stuff. Marvin, I had one over on Marvin, and it was a lawnmower. He got through uh, mowing the leaves and stuff before the snow hit and stuff, and the leaves were all packed up underneath there by the motor and stuff. He put it in the garage and consequently it caught on fire and stuff, and that's the only damage it was when we got in there and dumped a couple of buckets of water on that before the trucks got there to save that part of it. Wellington and Collier, we had some flames supposed to be shown with a resident set in there. Once we got into the house and got in there, all it was was a heater in there that would come on once in a while to keep some warmth in the <laughs> house so the blinds would not freeze up for the people that they were going. Houses up for sale. Uh, anyway, the other one was White Rabbit Road, like I say, last Sunday, and that one is undetermined at this time. Uh, that was a complete total loss uh, when we got onto the scene about the same time as uh, Penfield did. The flames were already coming through the roof. The roof was caved in and stuff like that. And like I say, the lady, she was lucky to get out of there. If she'd been going the other way, she'd have never made it out of there. But uh, uh, determined, I don't know what caused it or nothing. I didn't investigate it. Not my point. I investigated that over in that area and stuff in there. But uh, anyway, it was a complete disorder. And she ran next door to the neighbors and her bare feet. So that's the whole probably post 6 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. So it was pretty cold out there in that time. So, any questions? Larry, I talked to you at the Christmas party about the uh, flashing light down here in front of my shop to warn people that the fire trucks are pulling out. Oh, yeah. And you said you didn't even know where the bucket was. I think I located the bucket. It's where the garage filler the bucket. Yeah, yeah. Is that, but <laughs> I just wanted to say to you to work and also the people driving down the road, if you could start utilizing it, you told me to check into it. Why it's never utilized or used the state for a lot of money on that. And they come out and work on it every year in service if it never gets used. Well, we'll have to check that out. I'll see if it can be. Uh, if it is new or something, and I'll go from there. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chief. On to building and grounds. No, Kevin? Nothing from Kevin, okay. Has Sally got anything interesting for building? It's kind of yeah. slow time of year, right? Yeah. Most of it's been furnaces being replaced. Yeah, so. okay. And building official, Mark, you got anything you want to share? No, the, uh, in general right now it's just a slow time of year, so we're not seeing a lot of plan reviews, just kind of continuation of projects that were already going on. So uh, we'll probably start picking up again this year and we're hoping there's going to be quite a few more homes constructed again this year. So, yeah, so we covered it pretty much. Okay. Next up, I think we covered that now, correct? Is that, no, I have have you got more? I'd like to go over it. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, this is under <coughs> under the Planning Commission. A couple of things. Actually, the Planning Commission has been really active. Um, we took up the animal ordinance that we've worked on for the last two years. Um, we took up the medical marijuana, which we uh, recommended uh, approval up to the board that they're going to take up a reading tonight. Um, we recently, as of Tuesday, took up the rezoning of some properties over here um, to allow a new store to go in on the corner of the <coughs> and Michigan. And that was the recommendation up to the board for that zoning to be approved. Um, in addition, 
Last Tuesday was our annual meeting where we vote in new officers. I was voted in as the chair of the Planning Commission. Uh, Barry Jamish was now the vice chair, so when I can't speak, he gets to talk a lot more. And uh, Barb Jones is the secretary of it. One of the additional things that were taken up and I really wanted to talk about was a couple things, but first, the Parks and Rec um, plan that's going on right now is really exciting. Um, Adam had asked that the Planning Commission be part of that, so we're the initial committee that was involved in that on the report. Um, but one of the recommendations from the architectural group that prepared that for draft for the, um, for the uh, impossible grants was that we had an advisory, a public advisory committee. And that will be a committee, typically be a subcommittee underneath the Planning Commission, so I'd really like people that are interested in that to get involved in it, um, and they can um, get some information to Adam or Sally, and they'll get it down to us. Um, but we really need some public help on that. So anyone that might want to get involved in that, it's, it's really an important thing, and it's got to go fairly quickly because of the grant timeline for the grant is moving rather quickly, so we don't have a lot of time to, for the initial response. But um, it, it really is exciting on how the township changes uh, in general. Um, kind of the last item was that I think that the Planning Commission, because of the Open Public Meeting Tax, um, often don't have the, the um, people from the, our trustees join us. So when things get up here for a vote for the trustees, they often don't understand what was often a very laborious um, piece of work that is often a compromise between the sides that want something and the sides that don't want something. And I'd really encourage, um, as per the statute regulations, that when you guys have something come up, if you have any questions, um, call us, call me, and I can speak at least as much as I can for myself, but even better than that, if you put something in writing and get it back to the planning commission, we can explain why we're doing something. Often you'll just see the language of an ordinance change and maybe not necessarily understand what drove us to get there. And it's the devil's in the details of this type of stuff. So if you can get back with us, we're glad to explain the rationale and why we chose to do or not to do something. I think it's really important and helps your decisions. Uh, we're only a recommendation, but we're the ones that have the public hearings, that have that send out surveys. We're that arm of you that really reaches out to the public to try to engage them. So our decisions are made on, again, a compromise between what everyone wants to uh, try to get the best for the township. And we think we do pretty good work and we'd like to share that a little more robustly, as we say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <coughs> Legislative and intergovernmental relations. I don't think uh, Mr. Frisbee was not here. Uh, is he? All right. Is, uh, did, uh, I don't know if, if uh, is Chief back there? I don't see Chief. Is he out? No. Oh, hey, there he is. Did you want to speak, say anything at all? Uh, well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, real quick, 2017 was a good year. I didn't want to share too much today. It was a great time. It was fun. It's going to be a good time. Anyone has any other questions? Let us know. But 2017, there were 4,700 calls for service. Uh, over 3,500 of those calls were actually foot patrols generated by the officers themselves. 178 were at. 511 traffic stops, 52 accidents, 969 foot patrols. And then finally, part one and part two crimes. Part one being the more serious, part two being also just as serious, but a little lesser. Between the two, about 489 uh, uh, part one and part two crimes. So it has been busy. Questions? No questions, Mr. Chief. All right. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Where we go? Motions. Right, on to petitions and new business. Then, since we had took the other off, let's run through petitions and new business. Um, 
Letter A here, we have authorize and regulate the establishment of uh, medical marijuana. Um, our ordinance to authorize and regulate the establishment of medical marijuana facilities to provide for local licensing to establish penalties for a violation hereof and to otherwise protect the public health, safety, and general welfare. We're also looking to amend the Charter Township of Bedford zoning ordinance. The ordinance under the authority of the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act, MCLA 333.27101. Uh, to amend the Charter Township of Bedford zoning ordinance in order to designate locations for medical marijuana facilities within the township to place conditions on the operation of such facilities within the township to place conditions on the operation of such facilities and to otherwise protect the public health, safety, and general welfare. Now, this information um, is available, as we said, uh, upon request. If you would like to read or see it, um, we can give you a digital copy if you'd like. Um, and we will put it uh, on the website and uh, post it, and it will be available for everyone uh, over the next 30 days. So we have resolution 111-1803, resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Bedford to approve under the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I thought that's going to Is it? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I thought I was misreading something there. So, resolution 111-1803, resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Charter Township of Bedford, to approve under the recommendation of the Planning Commission to rezone parcels 134. I'm sorry, 1304, 360, and 13040291 to C commercial for medium resident medium density residential and split zoned pending review by the Calhoun County Planning Commission. This is outlined this is outlined in the master plan. Support. So so we support what discussions do we have um, that at this time? Do we have any discussion in mind? I, I was at, uh, I stepped in, I didn't hear the entire meeting, but I heard a lot of uh, the residents were a little bit concerned about <coughs> areas and traffic control and all that. And I'm sure we always have all that, but just so that we do respect their, their wishes that they're heard and we did well on that. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some little learning curves on this, but I think it's a good thing for the community to have another store in the, in the area. So, whatever you want to speak on, Mark. <laughs> no, it's a, it, we took it up. It follows the master plan completely. The master plan calls for that. The concerns really were separation. Um, there's um, fear of, of increased traffic that go down the side roads. Very legitimate. We have to make sure when we look at it, when it comes in front of the planning commission for the site plan review, that some of those separations as much as possible on those roadway, those entrances into the businesses, are done in such a way that um, will enhance the neighborhood and not drive into traffic. And so that's one of the biggest fears. Um, personally, I know from past experience <coughs> projects like this that lighting over in the neighborhoods. Um, there's a buffer zone required in our zoning, so there'll be a buffer zone of fencing required both from the from the parking lot. There's a separate section in the parking for the parking lots to be separated from the neighborhood and the building to be separated from the neighborhood. So it's going to be real important to try to protect the integrity of that neighborhood that we follow those regulations when we go forward with it. But we will very vigorously, and we put the we put the developer on pretty much the problems that we were in last night. Or two things, sorry, I think it was told me that it would be very vigorous to make them sure that we protect those things. Thank you. That's all I have. Hey, Ronnie, I have a couple of investors, Tom, so why add another one? 
Right. And and excuse me, I, yeah, the corner of and e excuse me, ma'am, we 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 have to keep the order, and so I'd like everyone to raise your hand, please. Um, you will be called upon. I'd ask that you state your name. Uh, we will give you your your time to speak, um, but we, we would like to do that within within the frame of the order. So, um, is there anyone else that would like to make a comment on on uh, this before we vote? Yes, ma'am. Can you yeah, state your name, please? Light, could, 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 could you state your name real quick, please? Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. What was your name? Ken. Thank you, Ken. The houses that are existing there now have two on the inside and two on the corner. Now, for years, there hasn't been, they can't let them go out of that. You can only go one way out of that because of the stoplight. The people line up in the left hand lane, you cannot get out there. That's almost an accident waiting to happen. Somebody's flying out there. I'm just trying yeah. to prevent something yeah. like that. Well, and I'll address that. Um, as we discussed, um, I think I discussed that with you at the meeting, right? That we would contact, uh, I know I said at the meeting that we would yeah, contact. A, correct. So I have I have contacted MDOT and uh, they did respond very quickly um, and they have that now um, to to do the study. All right, to to see if we can get a, a turn signal, a turn lane, something that will hopefully fix that flow as well as the timing of that light. So there's many adjustments that they can do to to reduce that uh, traffic that's turning left there going to Custer in those mornings and all that. That I know that it is a nightmare based on all of the responses that we had on Tuesday night. So um, so we did get a response on that, and so that is in the works already, as I said. We will get that no matter what. We're going to make sure that that is getting worked out. So. Correct. Right. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to make a comment uh, before we discuss it and vote on the, on the board? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment time and we'll move on to any other discussion uh, amongst uh, us here on the board for <coughs> this vote. It is pretty standard, as uh, Mark had stated, uh, that these two parcels, when you look at the entire plot of land there, that it is something that really should have been zoned part of that commercial um, when the, the others did get changed to that. And so um, I, I thought and it was pretty. And basically, all we're doing is trying to bring those two parcels in line. Correct. What happens? Correct. And there is the yep. next step. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, just so the folks out there understand, it, really the only thing, the biggest thing we're trying to do is bring those two parcels right. into the appropriate, uh, right. to match up with the master plan. And, and again, this rezoning uh, does not mean that something is happening right now. I mean, it still is going to be a, a, a a period of time before things uh, are going to be accomplished and um, you know, so there's a lot of steps still involved um, this is one of those steps um, so so um, if we're going to have uh, some some things uh, develop and grow here um, you know these are just some of the little changes we need to make so uh, anyone else we're good Paul Roller? Desi yeah Sipsick yes. yes Shaw yes Gibson yes Johnson Yes. Hi, Claude. Yes. Yes. Seven. And resolution carries. <clears throat> All right, and we're on to trustee personal privilege time. Is this where I can speak? We'll do the elected official report. That's for announcements. I don't have an announcement. Well, if you'd like to speak at this time, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. We had an incident in the office Tuesday, which involved Supervisor Heikola thinking that it's okay to bring his children in to run around the office during work hours. I find it very inappropriate. I went over and said something to him. I'm going to call a point of order um, right now because these meeting time, these meeting is not a time for uh, us to air that sort of a grievance. This meeting is not the position for that so let's set up a time i can't share this with the other board members 
at this point in time, um, meetings, we should not be directing things at individuals. That is not conducive to this meeting. And so I'm going to call a point of order if that is the line of discussion that you are going to continue on. It, it is not something that is going to happen within within our meeting structure. So, so you don't want everybody to know that you think it's all right to bring your kids in during work hours? I don't want any one of us to have to be attacked in a public forum that is not the correct place to handle a situation. We've, we've had some situations well, we that we need to discuss. we handle it between us. We absolutely can handle it between us. No, you told if we can communicate properly, so we're gonna we're gonna move forward. You told me and that you said, would this consider is not the place. listening this to my issues. This is not the place, and this is if it. I would defend you and speak up. I'm going to you call the point of order, and we will continue. Would we? Anyone else on the board would like to have? <coughs> yeah. Um. Bullshit. I would like to uh, thank uh, our police officers for the uh, signs, the yard deterrent. I think it's really helpful. Uh, I requested that you guys get on it out here. Appreciate that. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys' service keeping us safe out here in Ballard and uh, Bedford Township. And I want to thank the, all the uh, supervisors. Uh, that, that have come to our just our regular meeting. We got three or four supervisors here. That's important because that shows that you know we got a partnership, a contract. And if they take the time on a Thursday night, uh, the command to come out, that's much appreciated. So I just want to say thank you, fellas. On this uh, next <coughs> thing that just happened here, uh, I would suggest that we make appropriate time to address this. Uh, we're, all, we're always uh, in fear out here that when we have a sensitive issue, we, well, there's a quorum, you know, and I want to say publicly, if we, if we meet on an issue, we're not voting that a quorum, you can discuss things as long as you don't vote and, and you can keep it concealed from the public. So if we don't meet and address these types of things away from this formal environment, it never gets addressed. And obviously it needs to be addressed. So I'm saying, you know, after, after a meeting like this, something that sensitive and delicate, we should go into discussing it. And as long as we're not voting, we're not violating any Open Meetings Act. But anybody that wants to stick around and be there, go be it. <coughs> But we can't, we can't continue to have subjects come up and we never, ever don't see each other until the next time we have a meeting when we have this kind of stuff festival. And I, and, and I personally, over a year of this, you know, um, I just don't feel good with that, you know. I said my two cents. Thank uh, you, Randy. Randy pointed to me, but uh, the, correct, the correct the correct method here would be to go into closed session. If you're talking directly about an individual person or salary or a correct person to be in go into closed session, you're right, you can't vote there, but you guys can move into closed session to discuss this, and I strongly suggest it. I would, I would just like to say, when, when I was elected to this, I done it with the idea of doing what was right for the people, not necessarily what you want. You know, because I don't always agree with with a lot of the things that go on. However, when I ran for this job, I done it with the understanding that I was going to do the best I could to represent Bedford Township. Just a minute, please. Uh, and so doing, I've seen too many times since I've been here in this year, the personal agendas are being run, and I'm personally getting tired of it. And if this offends somebody, I'm sorry. But this is how I feel, and I think it needs to be voiced right here in this meeting so everybody knows where I stand. And that's all I've got to say about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
No. Citizens' time. Oh, can we go to the? Okay, go ahead. <coughs> Citizens' time. Okay. I saw. Did Mr. Harvey? Did you go up there? Um, Mary Harvey. Because I don't know one with the boss. She did it first. Um, two things. The police academy is a very good thing. I would suggest anyone go and do it. My husband and I did. It was very interesting and good to find out things about it. My second thing is we need to have recreate or a medical marijuana closer to people. When our son had cancer, our daughter-in-law had to drive to Jackson. And that's not right. Thank you. Did you run something to the story? Yeah. Richard Harvey, 2701 West Michigan Avenue. Uh, I apologize for not coming in and asking this question. What's going on with Silver Star, the third phase? They've resubmitted. Uh, they came back right. to us to have us update all those letters. They've right. resubmitted, but so far, I mean, this is the third time they've submitted for phase three, and there's nothing yet. Right. Oh, my. I yeah. Hoping. Yeah, I'm not sure when the end of that cycle was, was or when that, that was announced. So. Yeah. That, that was going to happen. Yeah. We read the letters in what, October? Yeah. I'll try to send some emails to uh, get some updates on that if they have any. I appreciate it. I apologize. <laughs> I, I could have come in and asked Sally, but. Yeah. No. Okay. I keep thinking it's going to hit. I just yeah. <laughs> haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Well, can you. Can your name? Yeah. Thank you, Sam. I think that man on the end, I think he's maybe the only honest one. Okay. Good job, man. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Sean Lyman. Um, you opened with communication via Big T. Um, so, what, this is my first time coming to one of these. Uh, I, I guess what I'm curious about is that we have um, ordinances that we're supposed to be talked about, discussed information passed out to the public um, and everybody, not just everybody, but you're a real team, you just kind of gloss over that and move on. Um, just wondering if we will have some sort of action or answers on what the ordinances are. Um, also, as a public place, as it just was mentioned by the, by the lady next to you, um, I don't think this is necessarily a place, to, it's not a daycare. My taxes go to pay you, you guys to take care of us, not the kids. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, sir. Peter Van Gulpen, 650 Linwood Avenue. This month marks a year since I showed up for the first time that I can remember to this hall. I got a letter from the city manager of Battle Creek, Rebecca Flurry, gave it to each one of your board of trustees, people you elected. It stated that the city of Battle Creek is willing to allow my 14.3 acres of property as well as my house into Bedford Township out of the city of Battle Creek. It also stated there was a six month process of due diligence for those to investigate and find out. But what they did was pretty much nothing. There were rumors, innuendos, and outright lies about my person. So the six months expired. Mr. Gibson got him to delay for one more month. I show up for the vote on the seventh month. It was not even on the agenda. And they voted no. No. There's something wrong with either my 14.3 acres, myself, my house, or my wife. They never stated why. So I drew the packet and ran for Commissioner of City Battle Creek Ward 1. One week after I was on the ballot, I got to go in the city manager of Alfred's office. She stated that back in 1960, when that property was first annexed into Battle Creek from Bedford Township, they drew the line in the wrong place. It's 20 feet the other side of my house. Meaning I've always been a resident of Bedford Township since I built the house 12 years ago. So, <laughs> I'm also bringing with me two years of back taxes. Now, since this fine board decided they don't want me, my house, or my property in this township, I'm sure you'll send that money back to the city of Battle Creek. 
think it's tainted or something. Because whatever's wrong with me must be wrong with my money. That will mean it be. My voter registration card, by the time this thing came, I don't want to be in Bedford Township. Because this, outside of neo-Nazis and the KKK, I've never been more disgusted or repulsed by any group of people in my life. Write a letter to the city of Battle Creek saying you will allow my property to be annexed back to Battle Creek and I will deliver it to them. All I want. I gotta ask a question. What, 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 what is he talking about? I thought, he, I thought well, everybody talking was, about. I thought it was all resolved. What's he talking about? It is. The city gave him priority. It's done. What, what, what is, what, I don't get it. I'm not sure either, and he left, so we can't uh, get any questions answered, so um, we will just move on. <laughs> no, we're not going to move on. I'm going to address. Okay. Well, she was here. Yeah. It's to my knowledge, is one person sitting here. <clears throat> he was annexed into our township with months ago. Yeah. Well, uh, he's not going to take official until the first of the year. Yeah, but yes. but it, was, it was done. It was a done deal. I personally uh, extended uh, uh, a welcome to Beth Bedford Township, and I thought it was all through and done. I don't know what he's talking about now. Nobody's rejected it. If they have, unbeknownst to us sitting here, I don't know who would have did it. So I don't know what the problem is, but he was welcomed about to Bedford Township. We did go through a process <clears throat> of determining where his property was. Um, when I really got into an in-depth, the city of Battle Creek it went to the state and something, and they came up with this property from several plats, and his two plats never got in, annexed in the city of Battle Creek. The state said he belongs in Bedford, and that was the end of it. That's been months ago. So now he comes in here now, I really don't know what he's upset about. I wish he wasn't. <laughs> kind of go back to the thought that the problem was this was property and it was in question because the city of Battle Creek doesn't give anything away. Okay? It was trying to shut down our growth, this guy was. That's my view. The bottom line wearing is wearing the big red flag shirt. The bottom line is nobody had no personal grudge on this guy or nothing. The whole thought was there's still something wrong. And when he did run for office, now think about this, in the city, all at once, the city really jumped into this and forced that property on us. That's kind of how that whole story kind of went. All I can say, all I can say is this, and I'm done. With. There was a dispute. There was a dispute. We didn't know where the property belonged. The state sent back, as far as I know, to our assessor, and they said those two plaques where his house is belong to <coughs> Bedford Township. And that, that was the end of it. Where did you vote, Joey? Well, he the state know. notified me to add him to our voter registration, which that is the card that I would then be required yep. to send him. So he's... Big yeah. so who is he fired him up that he wants to go back to the city. The city is about a week, but they... But when they determined that he belonged here, they made a restitution. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. And hold, hold up. If you want to speak, let's, we'll give let's you have time. Some, yeah, let's have some order here, guys. He's Please. not paying both. He's paying where he's supposed to be. But when they put him back in here, then they're making restitution to the township of Bedford for the taxes they withheld. He's only paying one property tax, no matter if he's paying it to Bedford or Battle Creek. When he came back to Bedford, then... Battle Creek is sending those taxes that they collected back to Beth. You have it on the Yeah, for two years. No. Okay. <laughs> but as far as I look at that, they kept him in Battle Creek for how many years? 15, 20 years. I would have rather seen Battle Creek send all the taxes back. But he wasn't paying two places. So I don't want that to get out here when we leave out here. He was not paying in two places, only paying one. And now he, he was paying them, now he'll be paying us. Okay. All right, moving on. Was there anyone else in the audience that would like to have any comments? So 
Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said at the beginning of the meeting there, you want people to think it's more positive, communication and all that. You have a citizen's time here. We ask, we say things, and there's never no reply back. Do we put something into these meetings where if something's asked to you or the board, we can get some answers back? I mean, if I was a supervisor, I would want people to ask me questions or the board. And they get back with them so they know where we stand. Now, yeah, you want better communication, <coughs> what more than give us some answers? That all the things that you're asking are things that should be directed to me outside of the meeting. Because this no, meeting. I, I, want, I want everybody to hear. We say this is a point of order. Right, I want everybody to hear. Everybody right, right now we have a point of order because, because you. Because mean what? Because that is because. not the portion of the meeting. We will at times interact and answer some questions like we just happened right now. But we will not have a system set up where we will have a tax set up and brought in. I'm not that, is, that is not how we, we maintain order. So all you that you want, all that brings is chaos to a meeting that needs order, and we will not go down that path any longer. So, so you're telling me you're not going to have a situation where we can ask you, it's going to be at your discretion to give us an answer back. <coughs> is that what you're saying? Are you so finished? We're, we're, no, so where's the communication? I made my statement, sir. I am available and and I, I won't and, come I, here with and you. I will I want yeah. witnesses, okay? Sorry. Okay, you are you're finished now, sir. Thank you for your time. I'm finished. I think this gal over here raised her hand and would like to speak. What I'm trying to say is when you're acting behind closed doors, things become covert and everyone I think wants a sense of transparency with the meetings. Is there any way the following meetings that we can address questions that were asked? the previous month before and kind of get dialogue out in the open? Is that something that could be done? Yeah, I will. I plan on adding that in to my supervisor address. Okay. Um, this month I didn't add a lot because I, I was speaking a lot on, <clears throat> on a lot of other things. And so this meeting is not going to be a time for people to direct Questions. Many municipalities, guys, you are not allowed to direct at individuals in the meeting. <coughs> it is a policy that, that I believe that we have because I have been shut down as a resident when things have been directed. And I don't want to see any of us have to have things directed in this meeting because that is not what this meeting is about. Is there any other co resident comment? I'm just saying. You, you, sir, your, your time was done. Uh, we, Did you have me on time or what? You, How much time you, did we get? We had moved on, sir, and, and you, you had your I time. Haven't. Sir, you are out of order, sir. This is going to be a joke. Huh? Sir, this is the last warning if you continue to. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. What we, we had. Did we, did we have you already? Yeah, I had my three minutes. Can I have yeah. another three minutes? I, I think that we're going we're gonna to have to move on at this point in time in the it's meeting. I apologize. Just, just to keep the things consistent here for this meeting time, we're going we're gonna to continue moving forward. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, Mayor Bemis, um, Bruce, I think what, what maybe could be made more clear, citizen time is the time for citizens, just like Peter did, to address the board with his concerns and you're not getting answers, it's just to say, hey, I have a concern about this, and, and that's it. Um, so I think that's where some people get concerned. It'd be great to be able to have a question and answer time, but that's not possible with this many people. It's just a time to, to share our concern. And so that's, I mean, not attacking the Bruce, but that's what, what the citizen <coughs> time is for. It's just to, to share your concern and be done. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm made. Uh, we have to allow in open meetings, we have to allow the, the community to have an opportunity 
to say some things on record. Now, I will go along with you saying it's not a time for personal attack. I agree with that. But we cannot shut down the public and give them three minutes or five minutes to speak and then say we, uh, uh, they can't, he, he wants it to be on record. There's some things you want to be said. Like, I just wanted to address that issue on record in front of that camera. So it's a fine line. It's your decision. But we can't say citizens can't get up and, and say something on record. I will support you and say it shouldn't be a personal attack to anybody. But they have a check opportunity to address an issue in public, on record, even if it goes into after a meeting. But you have to look at that before we just determine, no, we're not going to allow people to speak. <coughs> okay, we're going to maintain. Anyone else in the audience? I don't see any other hands. All right, we're moving on. Announcements by the chair. So um, I would like everyone to know that uh, Louie's uh, property down there, um, we've been talking about it for a long time now. Um, just want to let you know that uh, the, the latest update that I've been given is that there are some folks that are looking at possibly doing some things with that property. And so um, we are, I'm going to continue to uh, discuss uh, the happenings there and hopefully we will be able to get that cleaned up and uh, uh, get one of these eyesores taken care of. Um, like we discussed our Parks and Recreation Plan, I want you to all uh, look out. I've got a survey that I've been working on that I'm going to send out to uh, the, the Planning Commission members that um, I want them to, to see if there's any additions that they'd like to have to it. Um, and uh, we will be sending that out via, uh, obviously, some social media. We'll get some printed copies that people can fill in as well. Um, we also have next month, um, some things that were discussed here that will uh, be better is our, our meeting documents. We want to make all of this stuff very readily uh, accessible to the public. Um, and there is a program uh, that Joyce and I uh, sat uh, through a webinar, um, a, a long, what was it, oh, not that long, it was only about half an hour. Um, but it was, uh, it, it was a very interesting, I'll put it that way, um, system. Um, it's something that's utilized for us to uh, maintain a, 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 a congruent system of our, our minutes so that our planning commission minutes, all of our different boards and committees will have the same system to do our minutes. It will be a, a live system. We can sit here and be doing the minutes during the meeting. We can have our laptop instead of handwriting um, and the minutes can be immediately done and that, that draft copy can be available for you instantly. Um, and so these are some of the things that you know, when it comes to the communication and the things that we want to make available to you, the residents, um, those are some of the opportunities that, that we've been looking into as well. Um, um, and so, yeah, I think that's all the announcements that I had. And uh, elected official. Okay, so I can make an announcement, and my announcement will be that my office will not be open when daycare is in session instead of township business. And I'll leave it at that. I think, in all fairness, we should go into closed session and deal with this so that it gets <coughs> taken here. care of. It's I'm going to tell you right up front right now, I've been in one closed session with this bunch, <laughs> and I will not go in a closed session with anybody until our attorney is sitting right over there, and that's the end of the conversation. I will not do any yeah, closed session yeah. on anything without legal presentation immediately right there, ever again. Not in my term. For nothing. Else? All right, move to adjourn. Can't wait. The support? You bet. All right, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Access Vision. Your voice, your community.